Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Ekta Rastogi from Maharishi Markandeshwar Institute of Medical Sciences, Mulana, Ambala. Today, I am going to present an unusual cause of cystic pelvic mass in a young female, Curarino triad. So, we come to intro introduction part. Curarino triad is a rare autosomal dominant congenital anomaly which consists of three components sacral bony defect, anorectal malformation, and presacral mass. So the leading symptom of this triad is intractable constipation since birth. And the aim of our study is to describe the imaging findings of this syndrome on the various imaging modalities we have, then describing associated congenital anomalies, and to know the pitfalls in the diagnosis and cautious assessment to differentiate it from other pelvic cystic lesions. We come to material and methods. So a case study was conducted at our department of radio diagnosis. Uh, unmarried female of age 23 years presented with a long standing pelvic pain, heaviness in lower abdomen, features of bowel obstruction and chronic constipation. So patient was given a, given a cystic pelvic mass, probably an adnexal cystic lesion in the abdominal ultrasonography, which was done in a private hospital. Then the patient was referred from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology for abdominal ultrasonography to our Department of Radio Diagnosis to confirm the above findings, where we found the cyst in the presacral space in close relation to sacrum. Subsequently, an MRI imaging of the lower abdomen and CT for the exact localization of its origin was done. So on ultrasonography, abdomen, there was a large well-defined anechoic cystic lesion, which is shown by the red arrow in the adjacent image, which gave posterior acoustic enhancement and few thin internal septations in the presacral space. The lesion appeared to displace the uterus and rectal gas shadows, which is indicated by the yellow arrows anteriorly. Now, MRI spine and pelvis T2-weighted sagittal and axial sections, they showed a large T2-weighted hyperintense cystic lesion with few thin internal septations in the presacral region and having communication with the spinal canal through a partial sacral defect. On retrospective examination, sacral defect shown by the arrow was noted on ultrasonography. CT pelvis was done, the axial section showed partial sacral defect, which is shown by the arrow with a presacral cystic lesion. Now CT abdomen was done and the coronal section shows associated other congenital anomalies such as bicornuate uterus shown by the red arrow. We can also notice that the bowel loops are dilated secondary to the compression by the cystic lesion and also due to associated low-grade anal stenosis. To relieve the urinary tract obstruction, Foley's bulb was inserted. Uh, we come to discussion. Curarino syndrome, it's an autosomal dominant hereditary disorder, which is due to mutation in the coding sequence of HLXB9 in chromosome 7Q36. It can be due to sporadic mutation, Spectrum of anomalies with an incidence of 1 in 1 lakh people. We have female predilection over here with female to male ratio of 2 is to 1 in pediatric cases and 6 is to 1 in the adult cases. Now, Curarino syndrome, we already read, it's a triad of anorectal malformation, sacral bony defect, and presacral mass. Anorectal malformation can vary in range of its severity from anal stenosis or imperforate anus to, compl to complex deformities such as cloacal extrophy. Our case had chronic constipation history secondary to low-grade anal canal stenosis. So the most frequent finding includes sacrococcygeal defect, which can range from complete agenesis to partial hemisacrum with sickle shape. Anterior sacral meningocele are the most common presacral mass lesions, accounting for 60% of patients with this syndrome. Now, other potential presacral masses include presacral teratoma, dermoid epidermoid cysts, lipoma, hamartomas, or rectal duplication cyst. Now, the other frequent associations, they can be urologic, 
gynecological and nervous system anomalies. In our case, they was associated by conoid uterus. Now, uh, all the first degree relatives should be assessed with a pelvic radiograph as 20% of the cases can be asymptomatic and they, are, they can be unrecognized until the adulthood. The imaging approach includes radiography of the sacrum, of the sacrum to detect sacral defects. Now, pelvic and spinal MRI are mandatory for the evaluation of presacral mass and any associated intraspinal anomaly. Ultrasonography is also required to explore associated urogenital anomalies. CT scan is rarely performed to assess the sacral defect. Now we come to the treatment part. The treatment is mostly surgical to prevent any further complications and the procedure, it depends upon the severity of the components involved. Now it is important to differentiate the adnexal mass lesions from the presacral mass lesions of this syndrome for the appropriate management and multimodality imaging will help us in clenching the diagnosis. Now, early diagnosis is necessary with adequate surgical treatment. It will prevent eventual serious complications. The complications can include meningitis, sepsis, urinary tract infections, and really malignant transformations of a presacral mass. This is my bibliography. Thank you so much.